Hey, this is Kip, and in this video, we're gonna look at the brand new Navigraph G1000 plugin, which will let you use your Navigraph maps and charts within the G1000 in several planes in Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you're not yet a Navigraph customer, I would highly recommend checking out their site and considering getting Navigraph Ultimate. I am not sponsored by Navigraph or anyone, I just love their software and I highly recommend it. All you need to do to install the new G1000 Navigraph plugin is launch the Navigraph Hub app. If you don't have it installed, make sure you go to Navigraph.com, sign in, and go to the download section, and you'll find it there. Once you have Navigraph Hub running, just find the Avionics plugin G1000 and click install. Once you load up your favorite plane that has a G1000 in it, you can find all of the chart options on the MFD. First of all, if you look at the default map screen, in the bottom right, there's a button that just says charts. So if you go ahead and press that soft key down there, you will see it automatically load the chart for the nearest airport. Then at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a bunch of options here. First off, we can go between the different chart types. So we have airport information, departure procedures, arrival procedures, and approaches. And then finally, we have a weather button here that will change the sidebar to show the METAR of the airport that is selected at the top. I'm going to be flying to Los Alamos in New Mexico, which is Kilo Lima Alpha Mike. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the airport charts for that. I'm using a mouse, so to do that, I point at the inner FMS knob and right click on it to turn on the cursor. Then I can use the keyboard entry mode up here and type in KLAM to get Los Alamos. Now I'll click the screen to turn off keyboard entry mode. You can see if I hit DP, it'll take me to departure procedures. You can see there are none for Los Alamos. So let's go to the approaches, see what we got here. Okay, so it automatically selected the RNAV GPS Yankee runway 27 approach. If I want to look at the other approaches in the list, all I have to do is turn on my cursor and use the inner knob to select another one. So in this case, there's also an RNAV Zulu for runway 27. Whenever I want to change this, I just highlight the one I want, press the enter button in the bottom right of the G1000, and that'll load that chart. The third soft button at the bottom is called chart options, and if you hit that, it'll change the soft buttons to even more options. Because it's a little bit annoying to scroll around on these charts using the range knob, what you can do is instead look at a specific section of the chart just by clicking the soft key. So for example, I want to look at the profile section, which is this part of the chart down here. I can just hit profile and it will crop the chart to just show that section. Another example is just by clicking minimums, I'll get the minimums chart section here. And then instead of trying to scroll the actual chart in or zoom in using the range knob, I'm just going to zoom in using my camera and I can definitely make out these numbers here. If you use the range knob to zoom in and out of this chart and you want to get it back to its original size, you can hit this fit width button down here and that'll fit it to the width of this area of the MFD. And then to get back all the way to the full chart, you can hit all. If you happen to open a chart that is rotated to a different orientation, if you go under the chart options button, you can press the first two soft keys labeled rotate counterclockwise and rotate clockwise to turn it to the right orientation. Once you do that, you can hit the fit width button again to zoom it in. So now that I've got it rotated and fit to the screen, I can use the range knob to scroll up. These buttons at the bottom like header, plan, and profile are really shortcuts for the approach charts, so your mileage may vary when you click on these on different chart types. Now I'm going to hit the back button over here in the bottom right to get back to the first soft key menu. Now that I've changed the airport over to Santa Barbara, if I want to get it back to the current airport, I can just hit this sync button right here, and you can see that it basically synchronizes it to my current phase of flight. So since I'm on the ground here at Sedona, it'll bring up Sedona and then it'll load the default chart for Sedona. You'll see that it's not rotated the correct way now because I changed it. So I need to go back into chart options and rotate it back the proper way. And then once again, I'll hit fit width here to get it to fill the screen. Now that I have a flight plan loaded from Sedona to Los Alamos, I want to show you some of the really convenient things under the menu button here when you're on the chart screen. If you click on menu, you'll get a bunch of nice options here. The first one lets you quickly change between the departure and destination airport. So instead of having to go in and manually put in the airport code of your destination, you can just go here, hit menu, go to view destination airport, and then press enter, and it'll automatically change this to the destination airport in your flight plan. 
And the same goes for hitting menu, and hitting enter on departure. So we can easily flip back and forth between the two airports. Down further, you can also choose to either hide or show the position of your aircraft. By default, it shows you where you are and overlays it on the charts. And then finally, we have a chart setup option that opens a little submenu. Full screen, unfortunately, isn't implemented yet, but I have a feeling it's just going to remove this entire right sidebar so you can make these charts much larger and fill the entire display. Hopefully we'll see that in a future update. And then next we have another color scheme option. Just like we saw back with the maps, this will let us change from day to night mode. So we can basically change from the light to dark version of each of these charts. And to close this menu, you need to press the inner part of the FMS knob, just like that. All right, now I'm gonna hit back twice to go back to our default map. This is just the normal G1000 map. But if I want to change this to use the Navigraph maps, I can do that by using the inner FMS knob in the bottom right. You may remember that using this knob will bring up a page list. So we're on the map page group, and you can see here the second option is IFR VFR charts. These are our Navigraph charts. So as soon as I bring that up, you can see it's defaulted to the IFR high airways chart. We can also change to low airways, VFR, and the world map. What's nice about this is you can actually click to pan this map around and you can still use the range knob to zoom in and out. So if I zoom in a bunch to reveal some of the details of the IFR airways, I can then hit the follow button at the bottom to go back and snap onto my plane's current location. Currently with this first version of this plugin, it will not draw any route that you put in your flight plan, but you can still get to these maps if you prefer looking at these from Navigraph instead of looking at the default G1000 maps. This is still very useful if you want to look up details on the IFR high charts, low charts, or the VFR sectional charts that Navigraph provides. There are some extra options we can look through if you press the menu button on the right side of the G1000. So we have shortcuts here for getting to those different map types. We can actually turn off the mouse panning if for some reason that's getting in the way and you just don't want it to react to your mouse clicks and drags. And then there's also a settings menu at the top. If we go here, we can change our color scheme from day to night or from basically from light mode to dark mode. And this will apply to all of the chart types. So I can press the cursor knob to close it. So I'm just gonna right click on that knob and now if I change back between the different maps, you can see they're in the night mode or dark mode version. Anytime you pan the map away from your current location, it will automatically turn off the follow mode at the bottom, but you can easily just get back to your current location and continue following your plane just by clicking that soft key down there at the bottom. In addition to the moving maps and charts, you can now import a Simbri flight plan directly from the G1000. You can do that just by going to your flight plan, I'm going to hit the FPL button here in the bottom right. And now once again, we're just going to turn the inner FMS knob to change our page. We're going to change from the active flight plan to the flight plan catalog page. And we can now see our most recent SimBrief flight plans that we've generated. All you have to do to load one of these into your G1000's flight plan is turn on the cursor and then scroll down to the flight plan you want to load. Once you have it highlighted, just click the activate soft key at the bottom and then just confirm that you wanna activate that flight plan by hitting the enter button. Now I'll zoom out and we can see this route from Sedona over to Los Alamos. Let's go ahead and import another one so you can see a more complex flight plan. I'm gonna use the inner FMS knob again to change back to flight plan catalog, turn on my cursor. So I'll choose LAX to Oakland and hit this activate button at the bottom of the screen. Once again, I'll hit enter to allow it to load it. So you can see this flight plan over here from LA up to Oakland, and it's brought in both the departure procedure and the arrival procedure that was part of this flight plan. One thing to know about this list of Simbri flight plans is that it does not automatically refresh it, nor does it refresh it if you move away from the screen and then back to it, or if you restart the avionics in the plane. Currently in the 1.0 version of this plugin, the only way this refreshes is if you restart the flight and load back into the plane from scratch. The Navigraph team already knows about this, so hopefully we'll see an update soon where every time we come to the screen, it'll refresh our list from SimBrief. So for now, it's best to make sure you do any flight plan generation in SimBrief before you load into the plane. If you want even more information about the plugin, head on over to the Navigraph blog. 
One thing they have there is a list of the planes it's supported in, though you can see here I'm loaded into the SimWork Studio Kodiak and it's also working here. So I'm not sure if it actually works in every single plane that has a G1000 or not, but it's looking pretty promising that it works in the Kodiak. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.